what's good y'all your boy ross back at again with another video so i just finished uh episode four of the mr mcmahon documentary called attitude obviously it's talking about the attitude era the birth of it and how things played out and how far they pushed the envelope and this for me is you know at the time peak wrestling peak uh wwf at the time this is the era i grew up on and just seeing some of these iconic classic moments brought you know brought me back down memory lane man um they talked about you know they finished up how things ended off with the whole brett man you know brett um being you know pretty much screwed in the montreal screw job and how they kind of pivoted toward that in the infamous interview with um that vince mcmahon had you know was involved in in the infamous line of brett screw brett it changed the perception of vince so much to the fans that he kind of started feeding into the hate he feed it into the heat that he was getting like anytime fans saw him they were booing this man to oblivion so he fed into it he fed into the fact that they hated him for you know what happened to bret hart because fans knew bret you know got double crossed they weren't supposed to know but this is right around time you know the internet was you know really you know more people were starting to use it and uh, the wrestling forums were starting to become a thing so people were talking about it and speculating what happened and it, the information got out and now people had a bigger reason to hate vince hence the miss Mc, mr mcmahon character was born from the whole uh montreal screw job so it's unfortunate that it happened but it ultimately created i mean it's not i don't even think it's a close he is the greatest heel character ever in wrestling the boss that will do what he can to screw you over and doesn't care about it i mean a lot of people can relate to that and that's what was working for them um they even talked about Shawn Michaels, you know, walking out to the ring in bike, bicycle shorts and stuff in uh, medical gauze in the in his shorts. I'm guessing to, you know, make himself seem bigger. Pause. And then just kind of going out there and just, you know, dancing up a storm just in bicycle shorts. And it it got a reaction. And some say that is the start of the attitude there. Granted, you can kind of, you know, nitpick if that you want that to be the start, possibly, maybe, but, you know, it's really up to your interpretation, but uh, some feel that was the start because uh, Vince weeks later was like, Sean has attitude, you gotta have attitude, and hence, here we go, the attitude era uh, takes off, and then that's when they start doing the whole degeneration x kind of a way to counteract what wcw was doing with the nwo and you know of course everybody remember how raunchy and wild the dx was uh with the whole suck it chain i got in trouble in school for telling the teacher to suck it <laughs> i told her straight up suck it hit the crotch crotch chop man and I got in trouble for that shit, man. My mom was pissed. She damn near didn't want me watching wrestling no more. I was like, mama, please don't take the wrestling away from me. So, yeah, no, nah, I got in trouble. I told my teacher she had made me mad, and I hit her with the suck it. So maybe it wasn't the best influence. But at the same time, it was just it was what it was, bro. They, they needed that switch up because they to you know they were losing to wcw relatively bad and I, of course a lot of us knows this but it was cool to see the you know some of the behind the scenes footage and it was interesting to get vince's perspective more than anything else on how things was playing out and where they needed to go and then of course my favorite wrestler came into the mix stone cold steve austin and when they brought him in and it's crazy how things happen Triple H was supposed to win that year's King of the Ring, but obviously the curtain call situation caused Triple H to not be in that. So uh, Vince decided to give uh, Triple H the King of the Ring, and he ended up winning, and he cut that iconic uh, promo. Austin 316 just says, uh, Austin 316 just says, I just whooped your ass. Iconic. And from there, 
the stardom started to rise. And then they started playing up the fact that Austin wasn't going to be this this uh this person that was going to be pushed around. He, they even brought in Mike Tyson. They brought in Mike Tyson for the Austin versus HBK match for the WWF champion uh, championship. And when Austin ended up winning, you clearly knew what direction the company was heading in. And they started essentially booking this anti-hero. Because he technically, he didn't operate as a babyface. He was cursing, giving the middle finger to any and everybody. He was like the ultimate anti-hero. He was the ultimate anti-hero going against the boss that everybody hated. And Vince McMahon, Mr. McMahon, and it worked. They needed that dynamic. You needed someone that you can get behind that hates the boss just like you. And they wish they can do some of the things that Stone Cold was doing. And they were going down, you know, just some of the iconic moments of, you know, Stone Cold destroying uh, Vince's Corvette or another situation where Stone Cold is, you know, attacking Vince or giving Vince the middle finger or giving Vince the stunner, you know, or, or Vince using his power um, in the WWF to, you know, mistreat Stone Cold and screw out Stone Cold and, and title opportunities and wins. You needed that. They needed something. Stone Cold wasn't just enough. They needed the ultimate heel and they had it in Vince. And Vince played it up. Um, Vince even talked about, uh, how as a kid, as a kid, he, you know, he loved the fight. You know, he grew up from nothing, didn't have much of nothing, was poor. And, you know, the only thing he could do, you know, was fight. He loved the fight. And people, you know, would say, well, you cheated. And Vince's response was like, I won though. And that shows you his mentality, how he viewed things. He doesn't care how low he has to go as long as he wins ultimately doesn't give a damn he's like oh well i won in the end so who cares you know um <clears throat> then this was a good one and i like that they put this in uh in the episode vince uh clearly says um he shares no similarities with the mr mcmahon character as soon as he said that i was like okay bro i right, sure and then the next scene they go to, Shane McMahon says, Mr. McMahon, Mr. McMahon is an extension of Vince just blown way out of proportion. And then the next person they go to is Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan says um, they are exactly the same person. And a lot of different people were saying, even though Vince doesn't want to admit it, he says, no, that's not, he's not that person. Even Bruce Pritchard said, Vince, that is you. You are the Mr. McMahon character. I've seen you give me the same type of, uh, you know, rant or telling off, you know, just without the cameras being on. So, no, that that is you. And it's funny that Vince will deny that, but that's him. That's an extension of him. Like, to the best characters are extension of yourself. You just turn them up a little bit more than you normally would. That's Vince. Doesn't want to really admit, but that's him. He, what you saw on camera, is kind of how he views things. Hell, a lot of stuff that you've seen on camera over the years that Vince deemed entertainment, that was because he thought it was funny. He thought it was hilarious. So you saw it. And a lot of times it didn't translate to being entertaining. Back in the day it used to, but you know, of the recent years, no. So it's just funny that he would deny that even though everyone around him that knows him more will be like, nah, that's that's Vince. What you see on TV is just an extension of him. Um, they also talked about how, you know, they ended up getting a rock and, you know, they were trying to force the rock as the good guy as Rocky Maivia. And they were shoving him down the fans throats and the fans were not having it. And it wasn't until he turned heel and let him have a microphone that they had found them something. It's kind of very similar. They did the same thing with Roman. This is why it's always confusing how Vince couldn't see the writing on the raw with, uh, wall with Roman. All he had to do was simple. It was very simple. Just take the same rap path. Turn him heel. Let him be more authentic to himself. And he'll get over. 
And look what happened. That's exactly what they did. And now he's one of the biggest stars in wrestling, period. So uh, it's just one of those funny things where it's like, you know, seeing that as like Vince didn't learn his lesson, even though he had someone already go through this and he still didn't learn his lesson. Um, towards the end, uh, the end of the episode, you know, they 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 talk about how over, you know, um, the Attitude Era was. Even they were beating out Monday Night Football, like the ratings wise, they were beating out Monday Night Football. They were beating WCW. They were the hottest thing. They were mega stars anytime they went out in public and they were pushing the envelope more and more and more as much as they could. Hell, the women's segments were the highest rated segments back in that time period because of how they portrayed the women. It wasn't about wrestling. It was about looking good and 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 showing off your bodies and being as nude as you possibly could get away with it on network television you know on cable television so it was just one of those things where they were just firing on all cylinders and then they obviously end up talking about the unfortunate passing of owen hart and how um the morality came into play with should have should vince have kept the show going now this was a very very interesting way vince broke it down they asked him should he have kept the show going or should, why he why he didn't stop his logic and reasoning because was the fans didn't really see what happened to owen because it was dark in an arena so once the lights came back on they saw that he was you know being you know you know being carted off so they didn't really know what was going on um, a lot of people didn't even really know until it was confirmed that he had died. And his logic was if they knew, if they saw what happened and they saw that he had died, he would have canceled it. But since they didn't see it, they didn't really know. They didn't let them know at the live uh, audience. They didn't let the live audience know that he had died. They said, you know what? They paid their money. They wanted to see a show. Let's go out there and give them a show. And the thing is, it's it's one of those things where it's like, I get what he's saying, but I still would have probably canceled that show just out of respect for one, you know, Owen Hart himself, and two, the fact that, you know, a lot of these wrestlers loved Owen and cared about Owen, and they're literally going out there wrestling while Owen's blood is still in the ring, and they have to go out there and, and perform. That's a tough, that's a tough task. So I get what he's saying. Uh, they paid their hard-earned money. I wanted them, you know, to still enjoy the show and not worry about what's going on. But at the same time, that's a tough one, bro. That's, I don't know. I, I definitely probably would have just like, yeah, we got to call the show off. Like, you know, one of our own died. And the reason behind his logic, logic even more, and he expounded upon is, if it was me that splattered on the ground, I will want y'all to keep going on. I will want y'all to keep the show going on, even if I died. And I believed him when he said that. I'm being dead ass. I don't think that's him just saying that just to say that. No, Vince is driven by money and the success of the business. They even talked about how The Rock was like, you know, you sure you want to do this, you know, to a, 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 you know, a black champion, put the title on a black champion. He's like, I don't see no color. I don't care if you're black or white. If you draw me money, then you're going to be, you're going to be a uh, world champion. And Vince is like that. So when he said that comment about how, if it was me, I want the show to keep going on because he cares about the money and he cares about the business. And that's his mindset. That is truly how he is. Doesn't matter who dies. He going to keep the show going. And it's one of those things where he got a lot of ridicule for that. You know, of course, you know, um, Bret Hart felt some type of way. Like, bro, my brother just fucking splat on the fucking mat and y'all kept going. Would you be okay? Would you have kept going if Shane was in that situation like he i understood his passion behind it that's his family and, and, and even vince understood he's like i understood that he you know he would hate us for that he should that's his brother 
But all Vince saw and all Vince sees is the money and the business side of things. That's that's why I say his character, the Mr. McMahon character, is more or less the same with Vince himself. Because only a, the Mr. McMahon would say, "Oh, he died. Got to keep the go showing. Got to keep the got to keep the um, the show going on, pal." And that's exactly what he said there. So it's just it was a very interesting episode, and it just showed you even more how they're breaking down his psyche of he's a guy that when business is involved, he's kind of remorseless. He's kind of ruthless. He may have some type of in empathy but he's more or less still going to do what's best in his eyes for the business even if it may be distasteful to everything else going on so but yeah this was a, another good episode good episode to go down memory lane on the attitude era and it gives you a little bit more insight on how vince mcmahon views just life in general in relation to you know the wrestling business the entertainment business so comment down below let me know man how you guys enjoying um the uh mr McMahon documentary let me know if you guys are enjoying it as much as i am uh more episodes on the way i'm binge watching this man i'm i'm i have time so i'm gonna binge watch this i'm gonna be keep dropping these uh pretty much for the rest of the week for you guys so um that way we y'all can join in on the conversation and i'm gonna make a playlist so if you haven't had a chance to see them and you finally do get a chance to see them I'm going to make a playlist. That way you guys can just always go back to this playlist. And, you know, after you watch the episodes and, and join in on the conversation. But I appreciate all the love and support y'all showing on the channel. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See you on the next one. Peace.